Hey everyone, Rom Steele here again. So this is my first game of the knockout phase. Uh, so I'm up against Lord Aragorn. So I, I don't know if you saw me um, joking in the tournament general chat, but um, so I've played against Lord Aragorn in the semifinals of the tournament last year and lost both games. So and then proceed to go to the third place match and also lose both games there. So um, specifically going against Lord Aragorn in the in the top cut is. Oh, oh, I wasn't happy about that. But, I mean, it's like he's a player just like anyone else, right? I mean, just the fact that I lost last time doesn't actually affect the odds at all. It's just it, it's a fun story for me anyway. Um, so I decided to play free peoples first because I don't know, got to get it over with. And um, yeah, you never know. Um, still might get lucky. You can you can always win with free peoples. Um, so he goes zero eyes. I uh, guess my thumb of, thumbs up of approval. Always go zero eyes myself. And I get an entirely reasonable roll. Um, two movement, volunteer to muster. Um, yeah, he comments on how this ends his streak of five games without two musters. And I, you know, would have been handy if that had held on for another round. But but yeah, Shadow, you're very happy to see that three muster. So you can for sure get Sauron to war and get Saruman into the game at the same time. So that's, yeah, very nice. Shuffle some Mordor armies out. And I played Dane here. I, I don't like playing Dane right off the top, you know, because um, it's better to conceal that information, you know. Because um, if, if you conceal it, then they might rush with a weaker army to try to get it before Dane shows up. Um, I mean, it's not like Erebor is anyone's first target anyway. It's usually, if, it, if it's their target, they go for Woodland Realm first and then Erebor. But I kind of want to, like, I want to move twice this turn, so there is a chance Gandalf will die, and I just want the card cycle, you know, um, because who knows where he's going. Um, it's like, I'd like to get Thranduil, I'd like to get Caliborn, I'd like to get Guards of the Citadel or Immerhill or Cured Ships, you know. So, And then I draw into Book of Mazarble. So the, the deck is very excited about the dwarves this game. Um, so he, yeah, keeps moving armies. I move. I don't get hit. Saruman down. I move and don't get hit some more. And then obviously you can bring in Saruman. All I've left is an M. There's no way I'm getting Gandalf. And he gets Sauron to war. So I muster the elves first. I, I feel like if you have one muster and the player, the other player hasn't really told you where he's going, like this could be going for Gondor or this could be going for Woodland Realm. Um, so either one makes sense to me anyway. Okay. So he has... I haven't even looked at the cards much. Half Orcs and Goblemen, that's nice. Deadly Strife, that's nice. Candles and Nazgul Strike, also, you know, reasonably useful cards. Um, I'm not thrilled about these cards because, yeah, none of these are playable right now with Gandalf the Grey. So, so hoping for not a lot of Planters. I mean, I think you're almost always not hoping for a lot of Planters. So I'm very happy with this roll here because that means I can move twice, even move a third time if I have to against these two eyes to hopefully kill Gandalf because Saruman's in the game now, so... So very happy about these two W's. Um, so I'm a little bit scared because he could muster down twice and have all three nations at war and then be able to play day without dawn. So I think that's why I move right away here. Um, and I'm safe. So he draws a card. Uh, and he draws into courts areas on turn two. That helps. That helps a lot. Um, I move again and I'm safe. It's pretty remarkable. Um, like, I guess that's not crazy. Um, but the like it's over 50% of being hit on two dice at five anyway. Um, so he brings these armies. Now he's officially going for Gondor or at least painting that way anyway. Um, so now I pass because like I clearly want to. Well, not clearly, but but what seems the correct choice to me anyway is to use a ring to move again here. And that should kill off Gandalf. It's only one in four odds of not getting hit at that point. Um, so. You know, use a ring to move, kill Gandalf, and then bring him in with this Will of the West. So then in two turns, I'll have taken five steps, and I'll have Gandalf the White in the game. So that seems great to me. Like, I, on the downside, I won't be able to muster Gondor down and get in the lead into Minas Tirith. Um, so that's a bummer. But but at the same time, five steps in two turns with Gandalf the White, That's I'm, I'm still happy with that as free peoples. Um, so he then musters the Sauberans down. I'm not sure about that. Right. I was specifically holding off on giving him a ring because I didn't want to let him. Because uh, if I'd given him a ring earlier, then he could have used it on a Palantir 
and then attacked and then use the character die attack again and then Gondor would be at the war and then he could have used that H dice to bring in the Witch King this turn. Um, and of course, if he'd had um, ring wraiths or abroad, then he could have done it anyway this turn. Um, but he didn't, so. So he draws another card because, yeah, none of these are really playable. Um, you could play half orcs and goblin men, but these armies are topped up. Um, so what are you going to do? Play it here or here and have it just sit there and not do anything? Kind of the point of playing this is usually to quick get reinforcements on the front line, you know, so it feels feels sad playing it somewhere where you could have mustered in there anyway. Um, and Nazgul Strike is also technically playable if you want to just shuffle your Nazgul around, but that also feels like kind of a waste. So, so yeah, drawing a card's not insane. It feels bad, though, because then you have to throw out some of these cards. And these are good cards. Like, I don't want to throw out any of these cards. So now I use a ring to move, and shockingly, I'm not hit. Two threes, just barely. Like, Gandalf just does not want to die. I really want him to die, and he just does not want to die. Um... Okay, so he carries on with plan go get Gondor. Um, yeah, and he, he's also pained by his, um, you know, by his all good cards that you don't want to play on that attack right there. Like you could play Dread and Despair, or you could play a Deadly Strife. That, those all feel like wastes, though, you know? Um, okay, so we both do no card. We both get one hit. Uh, as free peoples, I'm quite happy about that because I, I want exactly one regular to bring back to Minas Tirith anyway. Um, and then I move again, because why not? The Fellowship's in perfect health, so and I really want Gandalf to die, so I can bring him back already. So now I finally get hit and get a two, so I kill Gandalf for that, and reveal and get a one, so that's fine. Also happy to see another revealing tile out of the pool. And then he plays Candles, um, which I guess makes sense, because now, now he can play it, of course, and now he... Um, yeah, we'll only have to throw out one card next turn. Um, so he gets one hit. Um, as the Free Peoples, I'm pretty happy to see Candles used this early anyway, because that means, you know, if I take a couple more damage, that means I can use Athalos while Strider is still alive. Um, but at the same time, it's still good to just play it with a planter that you don't have good use for and get it out of your hand. So, so I think that makes sense. He could have played Half Works and Goblin, and now that, like, a regular has been lost, playing it on this army could have been okay. Um Entirely reasonable choice. Yeah, if he throws out anything less than the Lidless Eye, I'm going to have to fly all the way over to, I think it's Bosnia, here's Nagovna, where he lives, and slap him. Yeah, no, he threw a Lidless Eye. Good choice. Um, okay, so I pick up Paths of the Woes' Horn of Gondor. Um, Paths of the Woes' is fun. It's just you almost never get to use it, and there's no real hint of Rohan being attacked yet. Uh, anyway, here we are. Okay, so another reasonable roll. I'm very happy to get a Will of the West here um, so I can get Gandalf back because I went to all that trouble to try to kill him last turn. Um, wouldn't have minded getting another C here so I could move again. But at the same time, obviously, I want to muster up Dolomroth here too because if I you know, didn't roll any musters, he could just point, 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 and he gets Dolomroth even without having Corsairs, although we know that he actually does have Corsairs, so... Um, let's see. So Gondor's not at war, so I can't muster these guys yet anyway. And obviously, I still want to move the Fellowship once. Um, so I know that because they're not at war, I don't have to freak out and use my Will of the West just yet. Um, so instead, I would rather hide and avoid Morgul Wound first. Because I want to hide this turn anyway, obviously. I still want to move. Um, so then he musters them down, and then I bring in Gandalf. So I'm thinking here that he's going for war in the south, you know? Like, he's pretty clearly doing Gondor first, and a fairly typical five points to finish Gondor is to, you know, have whatever armies you're left with come up to Rohan and finish off Rohan and then head up to Lorien um, and get reinforcements from Dol Guldur, too. So I'm thinking there's a good chance Dew is just going to be completely ignored, so there's no point in playing Book of Mazarbal to get them to war. Uh, so that's why I bring him down here. So yeah, I have the threat of Ents cards. And if I get Gwai here, we prove the Swifter. Maybe he can come and help one of these strongholds. Um, yeah. So he attacks Minas Tirith. Makes sense. Uh, so now Gondor's at war. Um, I pass. I don't know. Maybe I should have moved first. Just in case he had some had ring rights or broad, I guess. 
anyway. Um, so he shuffles these guys over there. Um, so now, of course, they're at war. So I know that Corsairs is an option. Sign a muster and elite and Dolan Roth. And he brings in the Witch King. Makes sense. I'm a little... I guess it makes... Like, you don't really need to rush Corsairs. I guess you're kind of just baiting me. Like, if I want to use a ring and not move the Fellowship, then I can get a second elite in there. Which I feel like is a terrible choice. So I guess that makes sense to wait and see if you can bait the free people's player into doing it. But by not attacking right away, it doesn't really make me feel like you have Corsairs anyway. Um, okay, so he attacks Minas Tirith, and he uses a Deadly Strife, which I get to use the advantageous position into, so it's nice that I get value out of it, but it's still not great because he's still hitting on fives on his combat and hitting on fours for his leader reroll. So, so he's still likely to get plenty of hits anyway. And he gets, yeah, four hits, which I think is a little bit better than expected with advantageous position, but, but not unreasonable anyway. And I get five hits back. So... I mean, it's nice doing hits back, but getting those four hits, like a shadow, you're still very happy about this exchange because you have, um, you know, as Thanos's friend would say, we have blood to spare, you know, like just look at all these regulars. Um, so he reduces and continues, um, which I think makes sense. You've got lots of cards you want to burn through here and you're about to pick up another one. So, um, so then he gets Olog high. Oh, that's nice. Having both of these just. Lots of reinforcements for an army there. So he plays another Deadly Strife. And I, I do Sudden Strike here, which I think makes sense. Um, the Fellowship's moving fast enough that I... And, and Gondor's in enough trouble that I find it unlikely that I'm going to separate Strider. And a Sudden Strike here, you know, if I get that one hit, that's taking a whole die off his combat dice. So I think that's, um, you know, potentially quite useful. So I think Pass of the Woes is more likely to be used than Challenge of the King at this point. Um, but I miss, which is, you know, about fair. Um, he gets his hits. I get my hits. Um, so such is the end of Minas Tirith. Um, so I pass again. And then he goes ahead and plays Corsair. Hang on. And we're back. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Corsairs going in. Yeah, makes perfect sense. Gondor's at war. It's very sad for me that I didn't get to muster another elite in there. Um, okay. So I move it. It's a bummer only moving once against one eye, but what are you going to do? That's what there is to do. And he starts wrapping up the Gondor settlements. That makes perfect sense. Okay, so turn four. Normally, I'd be more excited to see Thrand wheel, but there's a good chance he's just not touching do at all this game. So that's kind of just, it's okay. Um, it's also funny having Horn of Gondor and Axe and Bow. Normally, I'm happier to see those because, you know, they're free block of corruption um, or block foul thing. But I'm just really not concerned about corruption at the point. I still have, like, the full companion cast. Um, it's it's just speed that I'm concerned about at this point. Uh, they're still not bad cards to have, but they're, they're not the best, though. Um, let's see. you got New Powers Rising and Warm Tongue. Wow. Lots of awesome cards here. New Powers Rising, Rage of the Dunlendings, Half-Orcs and Goblin, Olakai, just, just tons of mustering to go get them and get it done. Right. Not as much great combat cards, though. So I guess that's something. Anyway. Um, so I declare, you know, just specifically to so that he can't play cards like Nazgul Strike or Nazgul Search. Um, so he allocates one eye, rolls zero more, and I get this lovely, lovely charming roll. Oh, I remember rolling that and just feeling like the game. Yeah, there goes the game. Lol. It's uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty hard to roll with that because not only is it zero movement, so at most I can move the fellowship once this turn if I use a ring. Um, but also he didn't roll any more eyes, so he has these whole eight action dice, six of which are attacks to just go get them and just wreck the free people's world. It's uh, yeah, very devastating turn for me. Um. But, hey, that's that's the point of the game is you do what you can, you know. Um, so I muster here in Gondor because I have help and looked for. So that's that's something anyway. Um, so what I'm hoping for right now is that he's like, uh, oh, they're mustering up in Gondor. I should stop that. So then I'm hoping that he attacks with this army and then hopefully I don't take any hits and I can retreat to here. And then I play help and looked for on Dolan Roth. Um, to mess with this army and to get those reinforcements into Dolom. Uh, maybe I should have actually just started picking up strategy cards, uh, hoping for Imra Hill. That might have been that might have been smarter. I don't know. 
Um, so he sees that I only has have one more muster, so he doesn't care that much about wiping these up. Um, so he wisely um, just shuffles Nazgul over to go take out Dolomroth. So there's a lot of different things I maybe should have done with this one. Um, what I did was move these armies. You know, obviously you want to get these guys over to Helm's Deep. And I moved these guys over in the hope that he ignores them or that if he attacks them, he doesn't do much damage and then I get to retreat to Eric and then I play help and look for. So I don't know. That was the hope anyway. Um, so I remember he thought for a while about this and he decides to attack Lambda, which I think makes an entirely reasonable amount of sense. Um, if I was Shadow, I would be suspicious about help unlooked for, for sure. Um, just that H movement over there. Yeah. Um, so he plays Worm Tongue just for the cycle. I think that makes perfect sense because, you know, like we said, these aren't fantastic combat cards. You want to play most of these for the event anyway. Um, so getting to cycle a card before you move on to attacking Dolom Roth makes perfect sense. So this would have been an amazing opportunity to have scouts. Um, I was, I was I'm pretty sad at this point that I didn't have scouts either, because if I'd had scouts, I could have scouted away, because I would have seen that he clicked a character card, so there's no way it's Swarm of Bats. Then I could have scouts away to Eric, and then I could have played Helped and Looked For, and that would have been awesome. But alas, here we are. Um, yeah. So he rolls three hits, which is... A bit unlucky for me, not very unlucky for me, though. That's that's a close to average anyway. And I get no hits back. So that's just, uh, that's very, that's very, very sad for me. Um, at least he draws into another not great combat card for him. So then I have three Palantirs to try to figure out what to do with. Um, I play Thranduil just because I was going to use the rest of these to pick up a card anyway. So I might as well get that troop on the board uh, in case that comes in useful later, and then draw a card, you know, because I'm not going to play Valor here to defend this. Um, it's unlikely that I'm going to win by killing all these guys. I'm I'm mostly just hoping for cards to slow it down, you know, like Shield Wall, something like that. You know? Confusion's okay, though. Um, okay, so he conquers Pilar Gear and moves those guys to Druidan Forest. So that makes sense. He's Now I can't muster anymore in Gondor next turn. And he's got Path of the Woes is covered. And this army's ready to go help take out Rohan. So that's all good. So I draw a card and I draw Guards of the Citadel. I did this. Yeah, this game was a bad one for that, for drawing a card right after it would have been helpful. Um, yeah, also a bad one for me for using a card for the wrong thing and, and regretting it later. But you'll see more of that later. Um, so I just chuck it out again because where am I going to use that? Um, he's probably not coming here where there are lots of elites. I could maybe use it as a combat card for when he gets to Lorien, but that's a long ways away. Maybe I should have chucked Horn of Gondor instead. I don't know. Okay. I remember specifically thinking about drawing a character card this time in the hopes of getting a card to help me get... Uh, companions out to Dol Amroth, but neither Gwai here nor We Prove the Swifter is actually far enough, because it's one, two, three, four, five. Um, actually, I guess We Prove the Swifter with Strider leaving then would have been enough to get to Dol Amroth, but do you really want to throw Strider under that bus? Like, you know, I need speed, um, so I need to have either Strider or Gollum as the guide, you know. Um, so anyway... Um, so he attacks Dol Amroth. Interesting. Which one's he going to play? I don't even remember. He plays one of the We Come to Kill. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Um, so I use it here because now it feels like it's unlikely that I'm going to have a good spot for it. Um, so I'm kind of, you know, shooting for the moon here that I'm going to do enough damage to this army to make it need reinforcements. But but hey, when you got nothing else to shoot for, you shoot at the moon. And he just rolls four sixes like it's no big deal. Lol. <laughs> Just what a game, man. Um, I at least get some hits back, so I trigger no quarter, but it, it really doesn't matter. I'm down to just one regular there. Like, it, he's cooked. Um, and then we come to kill misses. It just, you know, whatever. At least to make some press. Um, so I play Confusion here. I don't know, probably a waste, but my hand's chuck full, and I'm planning on picking up a card, you know, so I'd rather play it here just in the off chance that he rolls four ones, just because that would be really funny. Um. Yeah, and then who knows? Maybe next turn I pick up Imra Hill, and then this is a problem for him. Um, but he just gets a six like usual, and that's that. 
Um, so then he plays New Powers Rising. Uh, so now Helm's Deep is in trouble. Anyway. And he has Rage of the Dunlandings. Um, yeah, there we go. Um, so he attacks for the Vizen. Makes perfect sense because he has these two dice. So he's forcing me to, if I want to, I could have spent a ring to move these armies in. But honestly, like with all these forces here and all these forces here, even with these armies in Helm's Deep, it's very unlikely I'm actually going to hold. Like I maybe stall them for a couple more dice, but um, I'm pretty much just saying Rowan's cooked at this point. And I'm 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 really just praying. So I'm probably planning on using a ring to move the Fellowship again. So I'm I'm probably lost at this point, but I'm kind of hoping that he just rolls very few attacks to give me enough time to dunk the ring because I don't know what else do you have to hope for. Um, luckily enough, he doesn't get two hits. Um, so he presses and I run away and he only moves in three elites, which I, you know, that's reasonable. Um, personally, I'd move in more, but I do have an edge card. So there is, there's reason to fear that anyway, um, to try to keep Saruman alive. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so yeah, I use ring to move and I get hit anyway. Ha. Yeah. As that's the game for you. Um, so he puts Helm's Deep under siege, which makes sense. You don't want to let those guys get in there for, you know, because if I roll an H next turn, I get to go first. So, yeah. Um, and he draws Cruel Weather, which is just wah, wah, just, oh, man, what a game. Um, okay, so I roll enough movements to hopefully get in anyway. Um, so I think I use a will to hide first. Yeah, because I don't want to you know, get hit with Day Without Dawn and lose both of them. So you got to spend one of them first. Um, so he musters up in Del Goldur because, yeah, he's pretty much already got Helm's Deep wrapped up. And with this army over here, it's unlikely that I can contest much for Edoras. So he's just already skipping ahead to, you know, step three of his plan, which is going and attacking Lorien with these armies, which makes perfect sense. Um, so I move. I don't get hit. So that's nice. Um... Interesting. So he had Nazgul Strike and Cruel Weather in hand, and he chooses to play Nazgul Strike first. I guess if you play Cruel Weather first, then I can move again with this character die, and even if I get revealed, I can hide again with Strider and then use a ring, so then I get in for sure. Um, I guess this way, hopefully, he can wait to see what I do, and then... Yeah, that's a, that's an interesting choice. Yeah, I remember he took a while thinking about that one. That makes sense. Um... Right. Oh, yeah. And he wants to pivot Nazgul anyway, because he's done with uh, Dol Amroth. So, um, yeah. Uh, and of course, he gets a he gets a hit very likely on those dice. Um, yeah. So I just choose to eat the corruption because I have lost games in this spot before by um, taking a random and losing Strider here. So I like it is only one in six, and it would be nice to start eating through these companions to get closer to Gollum. But like when you really need his hide ability to get into Mordor, I like in general, I just don't risk it. You know, um, it's more important to get into Mordor with a slightly worse corruption to companion ratio than to lose Strider and wait a whole extra turn to get into Mordor, especially in my situation where speed is uh, absolutely the way I'm probably going to lose right now. Uh, plus, going up to four corruption means Morgul Wound won't hit me as hard if he has that. Okay, so he plays that and that, which makes me think that he has, you know, this Shadow Lightning's card, the move, two Shadow Armies, two regions, um, because he wants to bring that one in like that, and he wants to bring that one like that. Um, otherwise, it probably would have made more sense to bring these regulars in first if you're just walking them all the normal way. Um, yeah, so I remember thinking for a while about using a ring to specifically just put this army in the Fords of Eisen just to slow him down. But I don't know, using my last ring to do that when I'm not even in Mordor yet feels, that just doesn't feel good. Like if I had an H, I would do it. No questions asked. Um, but, but using my last ring, uh, you know, I feel like that's a tricky call either way. Um, so yeah, then he does his shadow lengthens and yeah, now Helm's Deep is pretty much cooked for sure. I move the fellowship. Um, they get hit and not revealed, which is a bummer. And 
yeah, now I draw random because now the corruption's a little bit scarier. Um, so he attacks Lorien. Yeah, I guess he has two rings, so you might as well burn one just fainting. Um, just to extra encourage me to not use a ring anyway. Um, so I must have Rohan down, I guess. I don't know. What else am I going to do with it? It feels unlikely that he's going to attack Helm's Deep right now with the ring and with that one. So... Yeah, I guess mustering down at least if he's going to rush Lorien first, then this way I can start mustering up in Rohan to try to cause some grief. Um, but of course, yeah, he plays Cruel Weather, which is just, this was already hopeless. Now it's even more hopeless, you know. Uh, that's just, uh, that's how it goes. Some games you just, you can't do much about it. Um, I mean, I could have done, I could have spent the ring to move the last time, but like I said, it's my last ring and I'm I'm definitely gambling at this point to have even a shot, so... Uh, gambling that he doesn't have cruel weather to save a movement for the future is is a reasonable risk anyway. It, it bit me this time, but I, you know, I, I wouldn't call myself insane for that choice. Um, okay, so he rolls that. I roll that. And I just draw a card, right? Because I'm, you know, looking at the board. I need to not die this turn. Helm's Deep is absolutely cooked. Lorian is probably cooked. So I think at this point, you know, I see great company. I see confusion. Um, I see Ents. So I'm thinking about doing some companion -y mischief here. So I think I was specifically hoping for Dead Men of Dunharrow with that draw. Um, because that would make separating companions and bringing Strider and some other people over a much better choice. Uh, Mithra Coat and Sting is still obviously a great card. It's just, you know, less great if you're going to lose this turn and you're not even in Mordor yet. Yeah. So he proceeds with conquering Rohan, which makes sense. You know, you don't want to give me as much time to muster the rest of S here. Um, so I don't play any cards here because I'm guessing, I, I feel like I'm hoping to hang on to this one. Like it would only help on two dice. So that's almost worthless, right? And there's no way I'm going to hold out here anyway. So why why waste a good card? Um, so he gets one six. They, they at least hit back. Yeah, answer each would have been useless anyway. There you go. Uh, um, and he presses naturally. Um, and he plays another card. Yeah, another Devil Reborn thing, and he gets him. Okay, so I muster an elite there. Um, right, and he just walks these orcs in because obviously I'm not in Edoras yet. So uh, if he takes it, then he gets a defensive advantage if I'm going to, you know, fight him for it. So now I do some crazy companion schemes because, you know, like I said, um, uh, what am I thinking here? Just, yeah, like I got to do something crazy to try to hold a point back because Helm's Deep is gone. Lorien can probably be taken out in one or two dice, um, especially if he has Grand. I haven't seen Grand yet, so who knows? That might be out there. Um it's not, but it could have been. Uh, so I'm, you know, doing crazy things. And at first I wasn't planning on taking Strider because I still need to go fast. But then I'm thinking, you know what? If I'm putting companions in Rohan, why not bring Strider just in case I pick up dead men? Because I need crazy things to happen. And this isn't super strong anymore now that the bulk of this army has come to Rohan. So, yeah, I'm shooting for the moon here. And there's a snowball in hell right now feeling much more hopeful than myself at the moment. Well... Um, so yeah, he walks into Edoras, makes perfect sense, and brings this army over to try to take Dale. Um, that's a pretty cool upside of not doing do, is that Dale is much harder for the free peoples to contest, because obviously that none of them are at war. Um, the elves are close to being at war, because I mustered them once and Lorien's under siege. But but yeah, as a tenth point to take, if you haven't to touched the rest of do, that's a very free one point right there. Um... Okay, so I attack Adoras, and I open with Brave Stand because, you know, if I'm going to make myself hit harder, might as well do that on the next round. Um, and this way, I specifically brought four companions just so that Brave Stand would be strong here. Um, and they hit really well. I roll three sixes, um, so that's pretty cool. And he misses. So suddenly this, you know, because I have these Captains of the West, even if I lose another unit, I'm still rolling five dice. Um... So suddenly this is looking downright favored for me, especially with these cards in hand, you know. Um, and he doesn't, you know, 
as Shadow, you don't usually have cards that help very much on the defense. Um, so I win, and that's nice. Um, yeah. So he's, you know, spotting that, of course, with Strider and Rohan, Dead Men have done Harrow is a thing. Um, so yeah, I have a very sad conundrum because I have this one character die left and I'd really like to move once so that I get into Mordor next turn, but I might need it to fight over Dale or, you know, to him, I might play Dead Men of Don Harrow to get Pilar gear back. Um, so he attacks Lorien and yeah, now I'm using my cards a bit more. I think I remember thinking right after I'd picked it that I really should have led with advantageous position because it was a strategy card, so it was more likely that it would help. Um, but oh well, what happens, happens. Um, so no ones, so I'm very sad. Uh, he gets three hits, I get two. So yeah, Lorien's probably cooked. Um, he presses, which makes sense. Um, I get lucky that he doesn't get any hits. I don't get any hits back. He presses again. And only one. So, so that helps. That makes me feel a little more hopeful anyway. Because um, if he tries one more attack. Okay, so now he attacks Dale. Um, he gets one hit. I get one hit. Okay, so sadly now I need to, instead of getting into Mordor, I need to spend this attacking Dale. Because if he, you know, he has a ring so he can attack Lorien one more time and all he needs is one hit. For all I know, he has Great Host or, you know, um, well, not Deadly Strife. He's already used all three Deadly Stripes. But um, turns out all he has is we come to kill and one for the Dark Lord. But still, needing one six on nine dice, he'll probably get it. So I, I need to risk it fighting for Dale here. Um, and I use Advantageous Position because, you know, these guys are not, there isn't a ton of hit points here. Like this battle's only slightly in my favor. I only have a one hit point advantage. And because of the leadership, we're both rolling four dice against each other anyway. Um, so at least advantageous position. I got to protect myself a bit more. I get one, he gets zero. So that feels good. Now, now this is more in my favor. He runs, which I think makes sense. Because um, that way, he's forcing me to split my forces between Dale and Woodland Realm. Um, okay, so now at least... He can't win this turn anymore. I'm still kind of cooked because I didn't even make it into Mordor this turn, but... Oof. Yeah. And now I'm feeling more hopeful because I pick up Dead Men of Dunharrow. Um, so that's pretty cool. So now I have, you know, a lot more opportunity for stalling out the game here. So I'm still not feeling quite hopeful, but more hopeful than I was before anyway. Um, the downside is that now... Um, corruption is definitely an issue since I've, you know, separated eight points of hit points here, um, in my desperate attempt here. Now I'm down to just Mary and a five corruption fellowship. So, uh, that's not happy. Um, also he allocates zero eyes. So that makes perfect sense. Um, and I roll that, which is just the turn where there's no cruel weather and all I need is one step. Now I roll four movement. Could have used that a couple turns ago. Oh, well, that's the game for you. I am lucky though, in that he only rolls one attack out of nine dice. Like he didn't even allocate an eye. So out of nine dice, he loses the 50, 50 to get an attack or not an attack on eight out of nine of them. So that's, that's certainly lucky for me anyway. Um, yeah. So I, I spent quite a while thinking before I do this, um, I use the Will of the West to move first, which looks dumb, but I'm scared of Day Without Dawn, and I have a very specific plan for the rest of my dice. So I don't get hit, so that's nice. Um, obviously, I know Cruel Weather's gone. Um, he attacks Lorien. Uses a card. Um, yeah, Desperate Battle, that makes sense. Um, which turns out to be hilarious overkill. Um, yeah, that's that. Now he's up to nine points. Now he just needs one point between Edoras... Dale or Shire. He just needs to get one of those and hold Pilar gear. Um, so yeah, it's an interesting choice. What do you do if you're Shadow at this point? Too? So, um, because you have a ring. Um, so picking up cards, uh, you could draw for character cards, hope to get uh, ring rates or broader black captain commands that might help you, you know, get an attack where you can shuffle Nazgul here or here and, you know, make that attack better. Um, oh, yeah, or Nazgul Search, of course. That allows you to move Nazgul 
And you get the Hurt of Fellowship, too, so that's fun. Who doesn't love hurting Frodo? What a hoot. Um, so I get a, I pick up a one. That's that's not bad. Uh, at least I, you know, get to get down to Gollum. Um, and I would have been better, but this is okay, too. Um, so, yeah, here's my very specific plan. I play Deadman of Dunharrow so that I can bring the companions and summon the three regulars here in Pilar Gear. And then I have three character dice, so then attack, attack, attack. And hopefully... Um, so one to attack Los Arnak, one to attack Minastrith, and one to hopefully conquer it. So, yeah. Um, so I attack Pilar Gear, don't even need to roll a die, because obviously it's going to roll a one or better. Um, and I whiffle and waffle for a while about which companions to bring, but here we are. Um, so now unless he has Ring Racer Black Captain, he can't win this turn, because he needs at least two attacks to, you know, one to take Dale, one to take Pilar Gear or Adoras. Um, so he plays Hill Trolls, which makes sense. Um, bolster up this army here. Um, okay. So I attack Losarnak. I get my one hit. I get lucky that he doesn't get a hit back because this army is so fragile. Like every orc that gets one hit back is like that close to, or to me just losing all these companions that I separated. I did leave Gimli behind in Edoras to try to make this army a little bit scarier, you know, because I obviously need to hold out in more than one place. Man. So he uses a ring here to shuffle these armies. So I think this was a mistake on my part. I think I should have left a regular behind just so that he couldn't do this. Um, just to force him to either spend his ring attacking or spend his ring bringing in regulars to defend. Because this way, now I have to pick. If I carry on with attacking Minas Tirith, um, he might have, for all I know, um, he didn't, but he might have had ring race or abroad or black captain commands. And if he did then he can, you know, attack Dale, and then he's at 10 points. And if I don't get two sixes to conquer Manistrith, then that's GG. So so I'm kicking myself here, and I turn around and attack Pilar Gear because, um, yeah, because I feel like I have to. So sadly, I don't get a hit, um, so he runs away. And now I just put a dude back there. I feel very silly doing that. I should have left a regular there. But, oh, well. Um, and I play file. Interesting. Why didn't I attack Minas Tirith? I feel like I really should have attacked Minas Tirith here. I guess I'm thinking... I guess I'm hoping that he rolls another, like, zero attack turn. And I really want to have, you know, non-revealing nice tiles in there. So that I can just run. I guess. I feel like that's a mistake. I think I should have attacked Minas Tirith. Anyway... Um, and he had the red tile because I added a blue tile. So fair is fair. Yeah. So I'm really wishing I had more time to run here because Mithril Coat and Bilbo song, like when I'm already on Gollum, like that, that helps a lot. That makes me feel a lot more optimistic about not dying to corruption anyway. Um, so yeah, there's, there's the roles, both perfectly reasonable roles. Um, yeah. So I'm, I took a long time thinking here. Um, I'm surprised that he says he doesn't feel like he's going to win anymore because I definitely still think Shadow has the favor here. Um, but that being said, these companions definitely made a mess of things. It's, you know, it looked like he could have won like two turns ago. So um, between bad rolls and lucky cards for me, it's uh, more hopeful still. So I muster an elite in Minas Tirith because, oh, right, that's why I didn't attack Minas Tirith. I was specifically hoping to muster an elite because with two regulars, like pulling off that siege, if it goes poorly and this army comes down and steps on me, then I've just lost all these companions, and then I'm then I'm feeling pretty cooked. So, I don't know. Maybe I should have risked it, because, uh, you know, again, we're shooting for the moon here, so why not hope the moon jumps in the way of your bullet, you know? Anyway. Um, so he plays Shadow is Moving. Really powerful card there. I mean, Swarm Bats would have been nice too, but getting to spend a Palantir moving four different units, this is exactly the scenario you want that. So he gets to defend Minas Tirith, bring these guys down, uh, and these guys over to fight for Pilar Gear. So Strider has a very tall task ahead of him to deal with this army and this army. Um, yeah. So maybe I shouldn't have committed that mustering the elite here because now he feels kind of useless. Oh, well, what are you going to do? I'm also really regretting throwing out Book of Mazarble or using it as a combat earlier. Because if I had, you know, brought Gandalf the White in here and brought the dwarves to war, this wouldn't even be a fight. This would be so over. Like, these guys wouldn't have a chance of beating this army with Gandalf. 
you know, but, but then again, if I hadn't, this army would have been more unleashed. So you never know what might happen. Okay. What are we doing? Okay. Lagged out on me a little bit. Um, okay. Right. He was finishing his swarm of bats movements. He brings this army out to, you know, potentially contest at So I'm getting a little bit hopeful here that maybe if I get lucky, um, cause I have Ents rage here. Maybe if I get lucky, I can actually just, you know, bait this army in for a couple rounds of combat and then play Ents Rage and blow them up in one shot. And then maybe I can go and retake Helm's Deep. Um, that's my crazy pipe dream I'm hoping for right here. Um, so I spend this muster mustering up one there and one there because I'm sure that this army is going to have to fight for Dale again. And I'm, you know, holding on to my dreams of Helm the Deep here. Um, he thinks for a little bit. And then he plays Day Without Dawn, which, yeah, as free peoples, I'm okay with seeing it go away. But at the same time, yeah, that, that Will of the West would have been helpful. Like, using that to muster up some more might have might have decided the game. So that, I think that's a good play on his part. Um, then he brings his armies together. Um, he attacks Dale first. Okay. Well, at least the north is at war. Now, that's not very helpful for me. Um, yeah, I use the scouts here because I want this regular with this army so that I'm rolling more combat dice for the next fight. Uh, I am giving up the defensive advantage, but it's just one regular, so I think this makes sense. Um, yeah. So this isn't exactly in my favor. Um, uh, let's see. In terms of hit points, I think we're even uh, five... Six. Okay, so I have one more hit point, but he has double the leadership advantage. So so this will be a dicey fight for sure. And he has a defensive opening, and I don't have any cards that help, but I don't think he does either. Oh, yes, we come to kill. It's not something. Um, okay. So I hide because, you know, I'm I'm hoping that I get lucky and hold on to Dale. And I need to hide to at least have the chance of five dice, five movement to get in. You know, that's super unlikely, but, you know, we're, we're chasing those 1% odds right now. Um, okay, so I hide the Fellowship. He attacked Pilar Gear uh, from Mons Gilead, I think. Yeah, and same, same reasoning. I like him there, you know. Um, Okay, so I, I do a bit of number crunching here. There's a chance that I win the fight here, but let's see. They have a three hit point advantage and a leadership advantage. As opposed to here, I have a one hit point advantage and they have the two leadership. So I don't know. Maybe I should have gone for this just because I had the captains of the West. Um, but I guess I was hoping if I take Dale, then next turn this army is actually really well positioned to take Minas Tirith. So... So I guess that's why I picked Dale. Um, so he does play his We Come to Kill. Um, which I guess makes sense. You know, if you, if you win this fight, you win the game. So it's, it doesn't help a lot, but it helps some anyway. So that's something. Interesting. If I were him, I might have even played... Oh, no, right. He needed that last one to attack Dale. That's why he didn't play that. Yeah. Okay, so I get one hit, which I'm feeling okay about. And he gets one. So that feels, that's a good start for me. Uh, with that being his round with the defensive advantage, that's a very good start for me. Um, and now he has to pick between downgrading his elite and not getting to benefit from this card or losing a regular to lose combat strength. So I'm very happy to get that one hit. Um, he keeps it and he gets a hit with We Come to Kill. So I feel, I feel very sad about that. Um, but at least I keep my four combat strength because I had two elites. Um... So he draws into Great Host. Yeah. So I press no card. Obviously, none of these cards can possibly be useful. Um, there's no Hobbit. There isn't two leadership. So actually, I guess I could play this and hope to kill a Nazgul. Eh. Okay, that's not the most insane thing I've ever heard. But but the Fellowship, you know, isn't in great health and Golem's the guy. So that feels like a waste. Uh, I got zero hits. So that's very... Now he rolls all the ones. Now I've already used both the Confusions. And he gets two hits. So that's probably gg right there but i press anyway because you know might as well hope i get two hits so there's a little bit of hope um but he gets one hit back so yeah it's very dicey times and obviously i press and he stays and he plays great host which makes sense because uh that way if i miss he guaranteed gets one hit back and wins the game 
and I miss. So that's that. That's GG. Um, yeah, I think I think reasonably well played on both our parts. Um, I don't think we might have both messed up one or two things, but or maybe three or four things. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's that's how that game went. Um, so obviously that doesn't feel good for me losing a game in the knockout stage, but but it's uh, you know it's not over, and I get to play Shadow next time, so I'm I'm still you know somewhat hopeful that I can um, pull off something here. Um, let's look at statistics. Um, so plus two on sixes for him, minus three on fives for him, minus five on sixes for me, but plus eight on five. So it's fairly average combat then, um, slightly better for him, but, um, yeah, and the dice were actually super average too. Um, yeah, I guess plus three on H's for him is nice. That's, that's probably one of maybe the best die to be rolling, but, but yeah, only plus three though. That's not huge. Um, a lot of ones and zeros. Um, plus two on Palantirs, plus one on Musters, minus one on Zs, plus two on Wills, though. So also fairly average rolls for me, too. So not too much to complain about. Mostly um, mostly the timing of the dice and the fact that Cruel Weather showed up. And Corsairs and New Powers Rising. So I, c- I can complain if I want to, but but hey, that's the game, you know. Um, luck is luck. That's how it goes. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm also quite lucky to have even made the top cut in the first place. You know, a lot of good players didn't make the top cut. Um, who I'm sure played just as well, maybe better than myself throughout the whole Swiss stage. So, um, yeah, that's the game. Thanks for watching. Uh, see you next time.